What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. So uh, tonight, as you can hear, we are working on the Noisy IS. And the Noisy, the Noisy 2JZ GE. So I have an idea of what could be making this, this noise that we have here. Um, I think it's the VVTi cam gear. And I'll show you why. Um, I got the car warming up and I'm gonna show you guys what it kind of sounds like um, before and then I'll show you guys what it sounds like after. So the car's cold, um, it's, it's been idling for like five minutes or so, and um, you can't, I don't know if it's going to pick up in the microphone or not, but... The only way I can really describe it is it sounds like almost a diesel. So that's when it's cold, once it gets warm it's like a lot worse, so this thing's about I'm going to take it for a spin here. So I'm going to drive the car here and, and see, or I'll show you guys what it sounds like after I drive it because it does get a lot worse with temperature. And uh, yeah. So I just drove the car for, I don't know, about five miles, really beat on it. Got it nice and warm. And you can definitely notice a difference in the noise. Get you guys up in the bay here. pretty bad. So that's the noise I'm talking about. That's the noise I'm hopefully going to be fixing here tonight on the IS. Um, I'm not going to like film a how-to or anything. If anybody wants to know how to change the uh, VVTi gear, you know, you can Google it or whatever. Um, I'm redoing my deck right now. That's why I haven't had any automotive content. But here's the part that I got. There's the part number. Make sure you get OEM parts. You know, I would never buy a VVTi component that is not factory original. Um, this part was, uh, I believe it was $120 shipped. So, factory intake VVTi gear. Hopefully it fixes it, we'll see. And uh, I'll update guys. So, I, was, I told you guys I wasn't gonna do any like more uh, DIYs or anything. And uh, I didn't plan to, and I don't think this is like a DIY, but I want to show you guys some like tips and tricks because I remember when I when I replaced my first VVTi cam gear on uh, GS300. It was the first GS300 I had. Um, this uh, cam gear it, it commonly leaks right here, and uh, I ended up just buying a new one like I did now. I guess you can like put an O-ring in them, but I just bought a new one. But uh, I, it, the, the information online is like really sketchy. I think because like the Toyota community is is a bunch of idiots and they just don't know what they're talking about. It's really difficult to get information on these cars and like reliable information. So, um, so the the gear itself, one of the tricks that you can do to like release the oil, because this entire cam gear is literally filled with oil, is to uh, just kind of press the oil out. I already did it, and you can hear the air flow now. So this thing is like pretty much empty. So when I take this off, not much oil is going to come out. And when I take the uh, inside bolt off, you know, no oil will come out either. Um, this failure here, which is actually pretty common, I've found. Um, I think it is. This is the first time I've ever seen it in person. But if you get a VVTi 2J or 1J, then it sounds like a diesel when it's idling. Um, I think it's this. This gear develops play, and it knocks while you're driving. So, um, one more thing I wanted to um, basically just uh, touch on on this job is timing this gear. Because this is where there's lots of like crappy information um, as far as from like the internet guys. And you can get this information from the, uh, the factory TIS uh, service manual. But um, basically when you time this gear, all of the play in the VVTi needs to be on this side of the gear or counterclockwise. So when you time it, you make sure that the gear is all the way to the right and your timing marks line up. I don't know if I can get it in the video. So you want to make sure your timing marks line up 
with the gear all the way to the right. So I'm a little bit off there, but um, that's how you want to put the belt on is is all the way to the right because the way VVTi works is it moves the gear. So um, one more check. I don't know if anybody's really going to care, but you don't need to remove the the tensioner here. You can walk the belt off of the uh, cam gear. You can walk it off of the uh, pulley here, and then you can get a pry bar in here, press the gear, and pull the belt off. And then I'm going to stick a pry bar in here, and then pin the tensioner um, just to save time. You don't need to remove this assembly because you'd have to remove the alternator to get the tensioner out. So just another quick trick when replacing your VVTi gear, um, you don't have to like take all this shit off like the repair manual says. So just a little tip and trick there. So this would be day three of the uh, VVTi cam gear vlog. And uh, the VVTi cam gear ended up not being the actual problem. Um, I have it installed, it's in the car and everything. But uh, I found another issue and it is actually, the valves are like way out of adjustment. So um, I, I didn't even start it up, I just installed the gear. I'm gonna leave it on the car because I'm not sure which direction I'm gonna go right now with the car. Um, but there it is installed and as you can see, the cylinder head looks really, really clean. And this is just my, um, I guess my guess is that somebody, this head, this head is too clean. This car has almost 170,000 miles. And I think what happened is somebody rebuilt the head. And I think they probably either didn't do a valve adjustment because if you cut the valves or if you um, get your pucks mixed up, then your valves are gonna be out of spec. So with this head being this clean, I suspect it was recently rebuilt and probably somebody did not either do the valve adjustment at all or they put the pucks in the wrong spot. And uh, that's where we're at today. So another misdiagnosis, which sucks. Um, this car is getting expensive and it's all my fault because I'm, I'm screwing up. But uh, it didn't, I guess now that I think about it, it does kind of sound like valve train, but I don't know. I don't know, it's whatever, it's too expensive mistakes. The water pump was $100 and the uh, VVTi cam gear was like $117. So that's a bummer. Um, this is going to be the end of the video as far as that goes because I don't know what direction that car is going to go right now. Um, I did do some work on the EM1 over the past, uh, I don't know, about a week. It's been a week since this video started. Um, but uh, the, the EM1 is pending sale I think. I think somebody's gonna actually come from Chicago to buy it tomorrow or at least so he says. So I haven't taken a deposit or anything so you never know. You guys know how it goes especially with selling a Honda. But uh, I was just you know cleaning up and detailing the Honda here. Um, it looks better than it has since I've owned it. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, list this thing. Or I, didn't, I didn't even list it. I, uh, a, a guy was he put an ad up for a want to buy an Electron Blue EM1 that was all original so I, I sent him a, a PM and he was interested and sent him a bunch of photos and videos of the car and he um, supposedly is going to come get it tomorrow so if the car sells then that'll give me some money to either I, I don't know if I want to fix the 2J yet or if I want to um, do a 1J because I can get a 1J like shipped to my door for like 15, 1600 bucks which would be super cool. You know, single turbo VVTi. I won't have to deal with like adjusting the valves. I know it's like a simple process adjusting the valves, but um, I have like over two hundred dollars in parts on that uh, GE there, and I can I can pull it out, put the one J in, and keep the GE like on the side in case the the black um, IS has any engine issues, and I can just uh, I'll have a full dropout sitting ready to go. Um, so that might be the. Uh, the, the plan for the IS. I'm not sure though because I mean I also want to put a lift in the garage and there's a lot of other things that I want to do with the money too. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll just adjust the valves and see how it goes. It's just, you know, pucks are expensive. I think they're like eight bucks a piece. So eight times 24, I'm going to be well over $200 just adjusting the valves. Um, obviously, I'll probably be able to reuse a few of them so that'll save some money. But I mean, I don't know. I'm really bummed that the car is not on the road because it's like it's pretty much summertime now and I don't have a car that has AC. And that was supposed to be my, my daily driver and I'm, I'm still not daily driving it. Like, it's, 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 it's not good. I'm really bummed. But um, that's cars, you know, that's how it goes. So um, it's definitely not the first time this has happened to me. So um, this is going to be the end of the video. Um, if the EM1 sells, then I'll have money to 
definitely you know bring some some more content for sure whether it be a 1j swap or a valve adjustment or something like that um, I don't know it'll be good if it doesn't sell you know that's fine and I'll get the hood painted and um, continue with like my little slow restoration of this car I know I haven't been like filming any of it or anything but um, it's just like a boring OEM I'm replacing parts with OEM parts you know nobody really wants to see that so um, I don't know uh, this will be the end of the video, so I, I appreciate you guys watching. I, I hope that I helped somebody out with uh, timing their VVTi one or two J's because that was a difficult thing that I remember like three or four years ago. It was it was nerve wracking trying to find that information, and I finally got it from the uh, actual factory um, TIS uh, service guide. So um, now you guys can just I guess if, if this video if this video helps you out, then you know give me a like and and hopefully give me a subscribe and. Uh, yeah, this is it. I'll be back soon with another video. Take it easy, guys.